If you ask couples nowadays how they met, 70% of them will say online. This is a significant increase from 30% just 10 years ago. So with such a huge increase in the online dating usage, of course there are bound to be more problems. I started online dating last year and I've had plenty of dates and almost relationships. And overall, a pretty decent experience. This is from the perspective of a conventionally attractive guy. I recently re-downloaded Hinge and within the space of about two weeks, I had 50 plus likes and roses and a very decent number of matches. Hi. For those of you who are new here, my name is Matty and I'm a male model and physiotherapist. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the five main problems with online dating. And if you stick around to the end, I will also be sharing with you five things that you can do about it. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. The first problem, it is pretty brutal out there. Now it's tough for men and women. I know a lot of people think that it's just tough for men and a lot of men just complain about how tough it is. It is also difficult for women for different reasons. Generally, only the top 1% of men get the likes. Okay, it's a very weirdly skewed metric if you look at the kind of the research on online dating. However, with women, the likes are slightly less skewed. It's generally more evenly distributed. And one of the reasons for this is that there are many more men on the app than women. So women are the commodity. They have their pick. They are the choosers. They can choose which men they want to match with, which men they want to go out with, because they have abundance. And because there are so many men on the app sending them likes and one-liners. So there's been quite a few experiments online where they've had an attractive girl and an attractive guy. Maybe they've used a male model and a female model. And they found that the female model got a hundred likes plus a day. Whereas the male model got like a handful. That is quite a disparity for two people that are relatively equally attractive in terms of the look scale or whatever, say like eight or nines out of 10. They even did a Tinder experiment where they had an overweight girl and a male model and they found that the overweight girl got more likes than the male model. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? That is just crazy to think. So essentially because of this issue, even the average girl will think that she deserves a male model. So it's this abundance of choice that women have that leads them to have an inflated perception of their self-worth or how attractive they are, but also the sheer abundance that they have makes it hard for them to choose. It can be overwhelming. However, for men, it's scarcity. If you're not in that top 1% bracket of men in terms of attractiveness or height or whatever, then it's gonna be really hard. I've heard stories of girls that will get the hinge plus just so that they can set their filter to six foot plus. That is mental. Only 14% of the adult male population is over six foot tall. The second issue is time consumption. Now I'm a pretty positive person. I believe that you get out of life what you put in and I, I think this is totally, totally true. But for dating apps, you have to put even more in. The amount that you put in isn't necessarily proportional to the amount you'll get out. Swiping can be really addictive. Time passes really quickly. Before you know it, you've spent an hour was swiping on hinge and you're just like where's that time gone i know because i've been there you can just ruin your productivity for the day especially if you start in the morning swiping the part of your brain that wants to do things and get things done that quick dopamine release of seeing attractive women on hinge and swiping just gets rid of it basically and you just feel like a bum for the rest of the day I'm someone who likes to be productive and I'm sure you guys watching this video want to be productive too. And if you're swiping, even for like half an hour in the morning, that's gonna just destroy your productivity. The third issue is ghosting. Now this happens to everyone. Even the most attractive girls out there can get ghosted. So the reason that this happens as a guy on online dating apps is because you have other guys who are just as good looking, if not better looking than you, and they're just as tall, if not taller than you, and they have a job that's just as cool, if not cooler than yours. Some of them do have good chat as well. So, you know, you're competing against those really top class guys. And since we have already established that women have abundance on these apps in terms of their choice of men, they can quickly lose interest in the conversation that you're having with them, which is why sometimes they just ghost you. It's easier than telling you, sorry, I've met someone else. I'm talking to someone else. They just stop replying to you. Unless of course you use momentum to your advantage and you move across to Instagram, WhatsApp or text as soon as possible. The fourth problem is superficiality and unrealistic expectations. So about a year ago, I matched with this girl on an online dating app. When I asked her like, what made you decide to match with me? She was like, well, you like this and that. And this was just something that she just took off my profile. The main thing she said was, you are pretty. And I'm like, great, <laughs> thank you. But there must be more to it than that. 
we got off the app pretty quickly and we were texting, WhatsApping, phone calling. And it did seem like we had potentially something there, at least she was very receptive and I thought maybe this could go somewhere. Anyway, when it came to meeting up, we met up in London and she went to the wrong station. So that wasn't entirely her fault. She was from Essex, so she didn't know London that well. However, when she tried to call me to find out where I was, my microphone on my phone is dodgy. So I couldn't even hear what she was saying. So that produced a bit of stress. And by the time that we actually met up, she was about 45 minutes late to the restaurant. So that pretty much killed off the mood. And we walked around afterwards. And a few days later, I messaged her and said, sorry for the radio silence. It's been a, a pretty busy few days, but I don't feel like we had like anything there. I don't feel like there was a spark. And she actually agreed with me. We kind of agreed to be friends. And then she just ended up ghosting me afterwards and we ended up not being friends and we haven't spoken since. It's pretty tragic tale, but that's just an example of where, because we were talking so much over WhatsApp and text, I think that she built up an image of what she expected me to be like in person. Maybe I did the same. It is quite superficial because all that you have to go on is what someone looks like. That is literally the disqualifier. If you meet someone's looks threshold, so clearly I met hers and she like just about met mine. Other things that are pretty crucial in determining like attractiveness and whether you have the spark. Body language, tone of voice, smells a big one. You can pretty much tell whether you're attracted to someone just by their smell because it's all about pheromones. People that have an unattractive smell generally are not genetically compatible with you. But also when you're chatting to someone online, you build up an image or interpretation of what you feel like this person going to be like in real life, which can lead to disappointment when you actually meet them. Problem number five with online dating, finding something meaningful. It's swipe culture. So it's hard to find something meaningful if you have abundance at your fingertips. Even when you've met someone, you're always thinking, could there be someone better for me? Could there be someone who connects with me better? Someone who's more attractive, someone who's taller. It's just so easy to swipe when you're bored. Realize that some people are on the apps for the wrong reasons. They're not actually on there to date seriously. They're on there for validation and attention. You can tell very, very quickly whether someone's on there for the wrong reasons if they leave their Instagram at some point in their bio. So they'll be like, what matters to me is Instagram bio. Something that I didn't know is Instagram bio. So they'll put in their prompts, their Instagram bio. That's that's how you know, that's quite a big ick for me. If they put that there, then I X them pretty much straight away. Final thoughts and helpful pointers. Online dating isn't definitively good or bad. It's how you use it. It can be a great way of meeting people that you would otherwise never have a chance to meet in real life. But if used in the wrong way, it can make it very hard to find something meaningful. So what can you do to make your online dating experience better? Well, the first thing is play the game. What I mean by this is set up your profile optimally, take good photos, have good prompts, use voice notes. There are so many videos on YouTube on how to make a good online dating profile for Hinge, for Bumble, for whatever dating apps that we're using. The second thing is consider each swipe carefully. Remember that these aren't just pictures on the screen, they are real people behind the photos. If you're looking to date intentionally, then read through their prompts and see if they actually have anything in common with you. Don't be the typical guy. I know I've been in this position where I see a girl that I find attractive and even though they probably have nothing in common, I'll just give them a like or comment on their prompt and maybe I'll get a match and most likely I probably will get a match, but it won't go anywhere because we have nothing in common. The third thing you can do is don't talk to too many people at once because it will get overwhelming. Two to three is probably enough. If you're talking to people, if you're dating, that's like an absolute max because ultimately it becomes difficult to remember details if you're talking to more than five, six or seven people at a time. Consider pausing your profile and deleting it off your phone when you've met someone who you think it could go somewhere with. The fourth thing that you can do is make swiping pretty much the last thing you can do in the day. So do it in the evening. Don't do it in the morning. Don't do it when you should be doing something more productive because it will ruin your productivity as we kind of talked about. Complete your more important tasks during the day and find times during the day that you have to waste basically. So either commuting or if you're like me, on the toilet when you have nothing better to do. Don't pretend that you guys haven't texted or used your phone on the toilet. And the fifth thing that you can do is if there is something there on the app and you're chatting and the conversation is flowing and it's going well, try and get off the app as soon as possible. Use momentum to your advantage, get their number, get their Instagram, move on to WhatsApp, etc., etc., and arrange a date as soon as possible. You never know, you might be meeting your forever person. I hope that you found this video useful and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Crashing down all around this.
empty town I'm searching for the lost and found